Hi there, this is Derivatives 2 uh, with some examples for you. And uh, let's just start off with constants because we know how those work out, right? Uh, let me write a few down. y equals 186. So d over dx of 186 equals 0. That's a derivative of a constant, that's y. I'm going to do y equals, uh, I don't know, the square root of 42. Well, d over dx of the uh, square root of 42 is, uh, regardless, it's still constant, 0. And one more to drive it home. Um, pi to the power of 13. Well, d dx of pi to the power of 13 is still going to be 0. Why is that? Well, no matter what you do, these are always going to be some kind of flat graph. Zero slope. Probably looks something like this. This could be our 186. And it's going to be flat. The slope is going to equal zero. And that's exactly what derivative is. It's an instantaneous slope. So now let's work on to uh, something a little bit more obviously difficult. Um, but none of this is really difficult. You, you just have to be familiar with it. It's all about familiarizing. Uh, let's start off simple. y equals x. Well, the derivative, b over dx, of x. Let's use the power rule. We can use the power rule. We didn't need to memorize this one. We can do the power rule. Well, you have x to the power of 1. Right? This is this is the same thing as dx to the x to the power of 1, right? Therefore, when we do this, you just subtract the 1 and you bring it up front. So it's going to be times 1 x to the 1 minus 1, which is the same thing as 1 times x to the 0 power, which is 1. Now, I know it sounds like I'm really dragging this stuff out, but I'm just trying to drive it home that this stuff you're going to be able to do in your head in no time, so I'm not even going to explain it. 48x d dx of 48x. All you do is you pull the 48 out because it's a constant multiplier. It's the same thing as 48 times d dx of x. Same problem as before. 48 times your 1 times 1 minus 1 the same thing as 48. Simple enough. Let's go dig in deeper into something a little bit more complicated. y equals x to the fourth power. Well, d dx of x to the fourth power, x to the fourth power, that's the same thing as um, well, you just follow the same power rule, right? So you multiply the 4 up front, and you say x 4 minus 1. That equals 4x to the third power. That's your solution. Keep going. You're going to have y equals 1 fifth of x to the fifth. This one kind of pleasantly works out. I'm just going to write it out. D dx. Um, we'll just leave it in there. One fifth x to the fifth. It's the same thing as one fifth times five times x five minus one equals x to the fourth. Simplified out nicely. Uh, let's do something real crazy. Uh, y equals uh, negative one fifteenth 
uh, square root of x to the 30. There you go. Well, this one will be nice as well because, you know, as you go, d dx of this whole thing, negative 1 15th square root of x to the 30th. Working through the algebra a little bit, that's the same thing as d dx uh, negative 1 15th x to the 15 which as you do it will be negative 1 15th times 15 x to the 15 minus 1 that's the same thing as negative x to the 14th same thing let's do a little bit uh, different kind of problems. y equals, let's say, x to the negative 1. Well, d dx of x to the negative 1. Use the same power rule. That's all you do. You just keep using it over and over and over again. Negative 1 times x to the negative 1 minus 1. That's equal to negative x to the negative 2. What does that look like? That looks like this. Negative 1 over x squared. And probably just one more problem. Do something really weird again. Something that you wouldn't be able to think of right off your... right off the bat. Negative mm, 4, sure. And it looks like nothing in there is going to work out for you nicely. But what you realize soon is that with derivatives, you don't really care what the problem looks like. Because it's all about the process. You just, you have your first number, you put it in there, then you bring the exponent down, multiply it, and then you do x minus 4 minus 1. It's the same thing as 13 times 4 is 52 x to the negative 5. Notice how it's pretty simple um, and there's no reason to be uh, really intimidated by this kind of stuff. It's, it's pretty simple and once you get into trig identities and such then it can get uh, a little tedious but don't worry we get to that when we get to that and uh, you guys take it easy. I'll see you in the next tutorial.